Malaysia is made up of three major races. That's what our textbooks teach. But it's not actually as straightforward as that. Most people think that race is something in our genes, that we inherit it through our ancestry. But that's not actually true. I feel that um, it is a very misleading term. It's a sociological construct. Um, I don't think there is anything in biology that uh, defines a particular race. As we know it in Malaysia, we're always talking about Malays, Chinese, Indians being different races. And of course, there are so many other types of Malaysians that, that unfortunately have not formed the narrative for many, many years. On the surface, uh, we might look different. Um, but in terms of our biology, in terms of our genes, we are all the same species. We are homo sapiens. So if we're all pretty much genetically identical, how do we end up with this idea of race that groups us into three major races and makes us think we are so different from each other? Many experts think it started from the British. During British colonization, trading ports in the Malay Peninsula attracted immigrants from many different communities. History shows that it was a diverse melting pot of cultures and nationalities. The 1871 census shows as many as 29 ethnic groups living in the Strait Settlements. Even in the next two censuses, it showed that the Chinese Indians and even many of those who identify as Malays as having different dialects and origins. But in the early 19th century, the censuses in the Federated Malay States, then still under British leadership, replaced nationality with simplified categories of race. It's just an administrative tool to help the, the, the government organize the people. I think to, to categorize the populations that they had living in the country that they were managing. So, so who were the population and how do you group these people? So I think out of, out of that necessity, you have like your census categories and, and you have got a lot of people. So over time, the census also got reduced, uh, probably to make it easier. Even after colonial rule, we kept these simplified categories of race in our national censuses. It wasn't until after 1970 that we replaced it with ethnic group, community, or dialect. But even then, that colonial idea of race never quite left our consciousness. I think we hold on to race because that's what we're told is important to us. That's what we're told has significance in defining our us, our interests. And in a sense, it tells us if we're afraid of losing something, these, are the, these are, are the kind of groupings that allow us to protect ourselves. It's this idea of strength in numbers. But it's, an, it's, it's a construct. We create this notion of communal as a way to engage within our, our society. In other words, we all want to feel like we belong. But ironically, our notion of race may actually be diluting our heritage. So the three races in a way is very condescending because we've got much more, much, much more than just three races. You have diversity in the Orasli, the communities like the Telugus and the Punjabis, right? Or like in the Chinese, the Teochew, the Hakka, the Hokkians, uh, Fuchaos. All that diversity is not visible when your categories reduce them to just Chinese, Indian and Malay. And that's when we have the diverse native groups and all the other ethnicities that don't make up the majority lumped into one Dunlion Lion category. There are over 60 ethnic groups, not including over 20 other nationalities living here in Malaysia. This makes us uniquely diverse, and for the most part of the history, we have been getting along quite well. But it seems the old colonial methods of categorizing the population for political convenience still persist. At present, you have narrow nationalists and narrow religious uh, political parties who make use of uh, race and religion particularly to uh, improve upon their uh, support. It also starts with political parties wanting or, or, or political leaders wanting to champion their own, uh, their own ethnic group first. So when you have conflict, the this process of creating unity, national unity, becomes slower. So in this sense, I think it is bad to have in this country which is multi-ethnic political parties which are just mono-ethnic. Of course, mono-ethnic political parties have been around all through our country's history. It's easy to take up rich ethnic issues and you become an ethnic champion. The ethnic pathway is in a way a, a, a populist way. Politicization of ethnic divisions have led to conflicts in the past. 
such as the May 13th incident. We have now come a long way from that. But remnants of populist policies that were born out of those periods of time still remain at an institutional level. Institutions are where we, have, we might have policies that discriminate or that perceives privileging. Can we move to a more competitive, merit-based uh, policy that do not privilege um, on any ethnic categories? But this should expand not just in government but also in, in the private sector, so institutions, organisations, companies. To cover all that, you can have anti-racist laws, anti-discriminatory laws. Yeah. Discrimination at the institutional level translates to the societal level as well. People are influenced by all kinds of thinking at the top. And sometimes, among the middle class, the feelings of racialism you know, is much, much stronger than anywhere else because it is there that you have competition competition for business, competition for jobs, competition for educational opportunities. While it's easy to blame the system, it is possible for us to move away from these entrenched ideas about each other. It's very important that right from early days, they should be taught to understand each other. And one way of understanding and communicating well is through the knowledge of the language. Now, right from the beginning, you should be teaching uh, uh, different languages to the different ethnic groups. They can intermingle, they can intercommunicate, and they can understand among, among themselves. And this overcomes uh, differences, uh, prejudices, and uh, discrimination. Okay, so Malaysia in the 21st century, where are we? What do we want the legacy for our children to have? Uh, are we going to be a society of people who, where, where things are founded on trust? We are empathetic, where we are responsible in our actions. So perhaps it's time to do away with the problematic discourse of race as how it's seen today and celebrate diversity to focus on issues that truly matter, inclusiveness and respect.